kind of focal point, a metaphor, an image that, that, that constellates for the collective a sense of the ending of the Egyptian civilization, which then goes on to stand metaphorically for the ending of great civilizations in general the might and the glory and the wonder of Egypt, you know, 2,000 years or 3,000 years, depending on how you count it, uh, of, of this incredibly high civilization, you know, coming into a state of collapse and decay. Everything must end, we're dust in the wind. King Tut becomes the metaphor, the image. Based on this, let me make a prediction, a safe prediction, because we won't know it's true for 100 years. I'll be out of town by then. <laughs> but here it is, and I, and I do believe this to be true, that in, in an astrological lecture, let's say 100 years from now, let's say 84 years from now, next time Uranus is in Pisces, and it's a you know, whole different set of faces, bigger crowd, you know, evolutionary astrology, ruling the world, you know. Okay, so there, there we are, and somebody, you know, doing a lecture fairly similar to this one, says, uh, name a famous tsunami. Okay? Yeah, there it is. That's current events. There have been other tsunamis in history. But humanity right now is ripe for images of ending, images of our frailty in the face of cosmological forces that are bigger than us, that this universe will eat us someday. And that's just the way of being. Everything ends. We have an image now. These images of the tsunami will stick with us, not so much because of the horror of the disaster, but because of the timing of it. We need this metaphor, as we needed to discover the ruins of Pompeii, as we needed to open up the tomb of King Tut and have this personal sense of what the ending of Egypt actually meant. Now, n there's a gentleman named Nicholas Steno, rather, rather obscure figure in science history, but in 1669, he is the first one to accurately describe the origin of fossils. Fossils. So suddenly enters human consciousness evidence literally graven in stone that entire species have passed away in the history of this earth. You know, what about those dinosaurs? You know, we're taught in school, we think of them, you know, they're, they're like, you know, something for little boys to get excited about. The dinosaurs, you know, were the dominant species on this earth for, depending on how you count it, something like 50 million years. You know, we humans have been in the, in the driver's seat for, you know, 30,000 if we're generous to ourselves, you know, more like 10 or 15,000. The dinosaurs are finished. Of course, not the only fossil creature, but we think of fossils, we often think of dinosaurs. The understanding of the origin of fossils dates to Uranus and Pisces. Here's another one, Jean-Louis Agassiz under Uranus and Pisces was the first one to realize that the Earth had been subject to an ice age. At that time he thought it was just one, of course we now know there have been many, but the, the implication of ice age with the extinction of species and, the, and presumably the, the, well, some maverick science suggests the ending of a cycle of human civilization prior to the one that is presently recorded. I personally believe that. It's the work of uh, Graham Hancock. But that ice ages are a fact with all those implications of ending. We are frail. We are dust in the wind. This is the sum of our ambition. This emptiness that comes. Isabel Allende, in her book Paula, about the death of her daughter, writes the beautiful words, I have come to learn that the purpose of life is learning how to lose everything. Okay? There's a level of grief that hits us when we hear that line. But if we don't get caught in the depression, you also realize it's Buddhism 101. <laughs> you know? Learning how to lose everything. Okay? To be the kind of person who can lose everything. We're all going to face that challenge one of these days. It's called death. And Pisces, that sign of finality. Now, a lot of these things that have ended have been beautiful. You know, if, if uh, you know, we get rid of George Bush, you know, we're all going to be happy about that, most of us, I guess, you know, see the ending of something that many of us are not so happy about. But think of Pompeii. 
I had a funny experience in Pompeii. I was there when it was in my early 20s with a girlfriend. I guess I was 24 years old. And, and uh, you know, she and I were touring the ruins of Pompeii, and this Italian guide kind of had the hots for her. And uh, <clears throat> so he told me, he was, figured he'd, he'd get rid of me. And, and he said he was going to guard my girlfriend. I had nothing to worry about. He wanted me to see the ancient uh, whorehouse in Pompeii. <laughs> But they, 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 you know, ru in ruins, of course. And they, they, um, they didn't let women there because the murals were a little racy. But, you know, he, he, would, he would guard my, my chaste girlfriend, you know. <laughs> well, not only did I quickly see through his, uh, his machinations there, but, but I, you know, I also told him, I know where the whorehouse is. I, di I didn't know where those words came from, you know. He said, how could you know? And I told him. And I, I don't, I'm, don't really think of myself as psychic most of the time. But it was one of those moments where, like, I knew Pompeii. I knew where the whorehouse was in Pompeii. But <laughs> <laughs> at least, you know. I do have a Scorpio South node, for those of you who know evolutionary astrology. <laughs> it's a true story. Now, when we think of Pompeii, you think of the destruction and all that. I don't think I was there then. I think I was there when Pompeii was like the Sedona of the Roman Empire. You know, this was a resort city, a beautiful city, cultured city, with a beautiful, wonderful life available to the people there. All sorts of things to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think of, for me, just very personally, because of, of a sense of a connection with that place, how sad it is that it ended. How necessary it was that humans would have this metaphor of ending, but how sad it was that it ended. I think of... Uh, saber-toothed tigers. Can you imagine seeing a saber-toothed tiger? You know, one of the most magnificent creatures that has ever existed on this planet just for sheer grace and beauty and power. There aren't any more. They're gone. Now, there is a bright side to that, right? You know, from, <laughs> from the perspective of us little humans, you know. But how sad. Worthy things come to an end. Beautiful things come to an end. It's a way of nature that we must always make way for what is next, what is fresh, what is new. And it's not only that the bad guys get killed at the end and the good guys live forever, like in the movies. Good guys have to die too. You know, they lived happily ever after is the greatest lie ever told, you know. So this idea of necessary endings, necessary release, surrendering to the fact that in order for you to individuate, if Uranus in Pisces is hitting a sensitive zone in your chart now, in order for you to individuate, you're going to have to let go of something you love. It's not just letting go of bad stuff that you're obviously better off without. There may be some of that but worthy things, good things. I'm experiencing this very poignantly myself. Now, forgive me talking about myself so much, but I have Uranus uh, in, you know, crossing my nadir right now. Now, I've, I've uh, lived in Chapel Hill, North Carolina for 38 years now. It's my home. I've got a fourth house moon, and at least in, in the house system I use, and, and I feel very rooted, a real sense of community. 38 years in a place, it's practically un-American, you know? But starting to realize that the time is coming to move. And a lot of reasons, I, I don't want to, you know, bore you with too much personal stuff, but, you know, I'll be, be moving pretty soon. And I find myself really dealing with letting go, letting go. You know, my dad died a little while ago. My, my mom has moved to Maine to be near my sister. My parents lived on the coast in North Carolina, deep connections with saltwater culture down there. And I realized that uh, this past summer, it was the first summer in my life that I didn't see the ocean. Yeah, just kind of letting go of something. I mean, you can, I feel you feeling it, you know? That this is, this is I, I, I'm not over North Carolina, you know? I'm not over the ocean. Those are not bad things for me. They're not compromises of my God-given individuality, but have to let go of this worthy thing. 
to make way for what? Well, as far as, you know, my geographical plans, I would have an answer, but I don't know exactly what the answer means. You go to a new place and you hope for the best, but God knows, right? God knows what lies ahead for you there. And that's always the way when you come to an ending and you have to release in a Uranian fashion and release in a Piscean fashion, put those two together, that you, are, you know what you're getting rid of, but what you're going to come to, you cannot control it, you cannot fully foresee it. You're leaping into the dark, you're standing at the edge of the cliff, in the fog, and God is saying, jump, trust me. You know, can you trust God? Oh, yes, you know. Yeah, but when you're standing there at the edge of the cliff and God says, jump, we feel fear. And we shouldn't be ashamed of that. It's a natural reaction that we're afraid of letting go. And so we can cling to a past that needs to die. And we, the easy examples, the high school examples, are people clinging to god-awful marriages and empty jobs and all this for security. And that's classic Iranian stuff. But we're the gifted and talented program here, so I'm hitting you with the harder <laughs> stuff, you know? The harder stuff. What if it isn't so clearly labeled toxic waste dump, you know, in your life, you know? What if it's something beautiful that you know and you understand and you're at, at, at peace with it officially? But inwardly, if the sheer Plutonian truth comes up, you're done with it. You've learned what you needed to learn from this person, this place, this belief system, this job, you know, you name it. You get the specifics by what house and planets, you know, you know how all the techie tricks, but these are the general principles. Now, this fear that comes up is a monster and it can destroy the evolutionary possibility that the transit of Uranus through Pisces represents for you. It should not. There's higher ground. I want to talk about the fear in some detail, and I want to see it mirrored in, in history. And then I want to talk about the answer to the fear. I want to talk about the specific method for actually getting the inspiration and the vision and the courage and the faith to go forward. So we're going to have our, 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 our spinach, and then we're going to have our dessert. <laughs> okay. Well... The, uh, think of the Holy Inquisition, if ever there was an oxymoron, right? Um, now, the, uh, the, the Inquisition did not begin under Uranus and Pisces. It, it did not begin there. But what happened, let me give you the year here, 1252, the Inquisition, the office of the Inquisition had been in existence for a while. But in 1252, with Uranus and Pisces, the Inquisition first began to officially use torture in its discussions with uh, the heretics. Torture became recognized and appreciated as an appropriate technique of theological reasoning, which is, of course, a triumph of evil, you know, in the history of this world. Isn't it interesting that, that torture, when we think of torture, how long is it going to take you to free associate to the Inquisition? You know, we think of the grimmest, grossest, most horrible forms of torture, we're often going to think of the Inquisition. And how antique, how ancient, that seemed to us. But is torture back in the news now? Yeah, the stars and stripes. You know, here we are using torture in our discussions with the heretics. Is there a religious flavor to what's been going on geopolitically? On both sides, you know, I don't mean to be partisan there. You know, the Islamic extremists torture the, the, the folks from the Western world when they catch them. Torture. So why do we torture somebody? To get them to agree with us. You know, their belief is more powerful than ours, and somewhere deep down inside we know that. But we are clinging through fear to our, our pre-existent belief, and we want to kill the messenger if the messenger threatens us. This is the nature of torture. Uranus in Pisces has a grim side. Uranian energy, as we know, can be rather dissociated. We can turn off our emotions. One of the core emotions in Pisces is compassion a feeling of oneness with the other being. So as we look at the shadow of Uranus and Pisces, a rebellion or a dissociation from compassion so that we disconnect from our ability to feel the pain 
of the other person. And of course, that is a prerequisite to the ability to torture another human being. The monkey trials, Tennessee, 1925. Am I remembering that right? Yeah. 1925, a school teacher in Tennessee, uh, John Scopes, is busted for teaching evolution to the students in a public school system. And you know, big, big, horrible, messy trial. He is persecuted for teaching the truth about evolution. And I remember in the 1960s, you know, when I'm in school and I'm learning about the monkey trials up in, in I was living in New York in those days, and, and you know, we, there's a lot of Southern bashing in the education I got then, you know, those stupid people, those yokels in Tennessee, you know, who didn't believe in, uh, in evolution, even though science understood even then that, that that was valid ever since Darwin. And now we all know that there is no incompatibility between the enlightened view of the evolution of species and religion. Jesus loves evolution. You know, that was the attitude, basically mainstream attitude in the 60s. And the idea that we would ever again have the slightest controversy about evolution seemed like science fiction when I was a kid. Now look. Uranus and Pisces, see what's happening. See what's happening. I understand that if you go to the Grand Canyon, the official you know, Park Service brochure about it, one theory is that the Colorado River over millions of years, you know, <laughs> cut this great gorge. I read that in Time Magazine. One theory is? <laughs> you know, the other is that God went <laughs> 4,000 years ago, you know? Hey, it's just a belief system either way, right? Yeah. God, yeah. So here's, that's fear. That's fear, you know? Afraid of the 